I'm building another working Lego bowling alley with a pin setter, but this time we're using normal sized pins instead of the oversized ones from last time. Starting out, we need to make the lower belts. These are at a slant so that way the pins and bowling ball can slide down much easier. And if we connect three of those together, we can now test it out. The three belts can now all spin together to move the pins and bowling ball down the ramp. But that's also a problem because we need to sort the bowling ball away from the bowling pins. So we're going to use this bar and mount it at an angle so that way the bowling ball goes down the rail. But it also has to be tall enough to do that. Since this one is taller, it goes down the rail. But when we test it with pins, it also needs to not be made of foam. So I ordered some larger marbles. But for now, we need to fix this issue. Our treads can separate, so we would attach two wheels to the side to apply a little bit of pressure to then hold those treads together. And testing with a smaller ball proves it works. So now it's time to motorize it and let's attach another gear because it's time for the secondary belts. While the motor spins the belts one way, it spins this gear the other way. We can attach that to the ball lift. After testing out a mechanism over here where it would orient the pins the right way, I decided to scrap it, and instead, we're going to worry about that later, after we build the pin lift. The pin lift it has to be able to pick up pins one at a time, and take them all the way to the top. And adding that secondary belt allows us to have a complete loop now. So let's test it. If we take a pin and drop it here, and drop it here, it lands there, and then the second belt moves it to the right, and then our third one has hooks on it, so that way it'll be able to pick up the pin and bring it all the way to the top. Now we just need to make a ramp for the ball return. The ball goes out the side after going down the rail there, and we just need to connect it to the treads there. But that doesn't really work because our hooks are in the way of the ramp. So unfortunately we're going to scrap that idea and instead just do a simple ramp to get the ball off the treads and around those hooks. And now we can instead use that motor to secondary power our tread here. While gears don't mesh, we can use universal joints to connect it all together. Now, when we spin that top one, it spins our secondary one as well. And now it is finally time for the pin lift. We're going to make a small demo real quick, about half the size as it actually will be. And now we're going to build up some walls so we can test it out with some pins. With the motor running, it's now able to pick up a pin. We're just having them be picked up and then dropped. But we can see that each time the hook goes, it picks up a pin. But that's an issue. We can't have pins being picked up like that. It'll jam stuff. So we're going to spread out the hooks and it works. So now let's build up the pin lift all the way to the top. What I'm building now is a tread system to take the pins one at a time and flip them. But we'll take a look at that in a second. After adding in all the treads up top, we're going to add the backstop here and then we're going to build up some walls. And while we do that, I want to take a moment to remind you to make sure to subscribe if you enjoy the series. That way, you don't miss the next video. With all the walls built up, we can finally watch it pick up some pins. After the pins are picked up, they then get thrown off that track and into this section. This is the dispenser and flipper. Pins can go either way and then flip and or dispense at the bottom here. In slow-mo, we can see that the heavier side of the pin goes down first, so if they're facing the other way, they then do a little backflip, and they all go out the correct orientation. Now it's time to take a look at the ball return. I got the marbles in, but upon placing one inside, we can see it just gets stuck. Until we lift the bar up at a slight angle, it's able to go down the rail, and right out of the chute. So with that fixed, let's put it to the test. And it works, and pretty well too. Unfortunately, not everything was working. The original mechanism to get the pins off the tread was jamming. So I made a trapdoor mechanism so the pins can fall on top of it, but the hooks can push it down when needed. Then I added a bar over here on a rubber band to correct any pin that doesn't land flat. Finally, we can test it all together. Throwing the pins and the bowling ball in, the bowling ball instantly pops out and then the pins begin to cycle. Once the pins get to the pin lift, they are then picked up by the hooks one by one, and they are slowly brought to the very top. Once they're brought to the top, then they go in one of the slots, and the color sensor eventually detects them. 
In my next video, we'll take the pins into the pin setter so that way we can rack them up.